Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a video on my top tips for decluttering. So what inspired this video was I actually had a subscriber write me and she asked me how I stayed on track with decluttering or any tips that I had for decluttering because decluttering is a hard thing to do especially in this consumerist society where we are so used to the opposite which is accumulating and consumerism and constantly buying and we're so influenced by seeing hauls on, on YouTube and TikTok and everything else. I don't have TikTok, thank goodness, but <laughs> I was from a generation that did not grow up with TikTok and I'm honestly so grateful, but that's a conversation for another video. But today's video is gonna be my top tips for decluttering. These are the ideologies and the things that really help me to stay on track and help me to make decisions. And these are some tips that I think might really help you if you're trying to simplify declutter and minimize yourself and you're having a really hard time Time letting go of things and just minimizing your life in general so yeah if you guys are interested then stay tuned and if you're new here welcome to my channel on this channel we talk about all things um, that I love basically whether that's home decor simplifying minimizing organizing perfume makeup skincare home decor clean with me whatever um, just the things that bring me joy and happiness in my life um, and I do focus a lot on decluttering and minimalism so if that's something that you're interested in then definitely stay tuned and subscribe and with that out of the way let's get started in today's video Okay, so my first tip is to start by putting a pile of stuff that you use or wear on a regular basis. The reason that I suggest doing this first is because people are really, really good at knowing what we love and knowing what we like. It's a lot easier to discern our favorite things than it is to discern stuff we might not need anymore. So I would say no matter whether you're looking at shoes or perfumes or clothing or kitchen appliances or whatever it is, make yourself a pile of your absolute favorite things Things, the things that you use the most often, the things that if you had to start over tomorrow and you lost everything, these would be the items you would first go out and get. So for example, in your kitchen, for me, that would be a Keurig, <laughs> a coffee maker. That would be the very first appliance, um, maybe aside from a microwave, that I would run out and get. Um, so make yourself a pile of your absolute favorite things and the stuff that you use the most. And the power of having a heck yes pile is that if you have to sit there and him and haw for hours on end about something, chances are it's probably not a heck yes. It's probably not something you need. So making a pile that is an absolute heck yes, that is the start of what you're going to keep. And then all the stuff that didn't make it into the heck yes pile is stuff you can either consider donating, selling, or ask yourself more deep questions about whether or not you actually need that item. My second tip is to remind yourself that you don't need to own or keep everything that is nice. Just because something is beautiful or it smells nice or you like that thing or it's pretty or it's a good item uh, doesn't mean that you should keep it. If this was the case, you could simply keep accumulating to no end and you could just keep every nice thing that came along. And this is not what you want. This is why you're decluttering to begin with because you feel overwhelmed, because you have too many things, because you're not using everything that you have. So to bring yourself more mental and physical clarity, to reduce decision fatigue, to make your life easier, to have the satisfaction of actually using everything that you have, you're going to have to accept the fact that you don't need to keep everything that's nice. I mean, that's rule number one. Because like I said, otherwise, what's the point? If you're just going to keep everything that's wonderful and nice, well, you're going to drown in a sea of wonderful, nice things. And I've definitely been there before. And I think that this is a really hard concept for some people to wrap their minds around, especially when I've decluttered perfumes in the past. The number one question that I get from a lot of people is how come you're letting that go and people want some sort of an explanation they want you to say it stinks or it doesn't last or i don't like the flowers that are in it or whatever the truth is i just don't want this much stuff and i think that's a really hard concept for people to wrap their minds around especially like i said in this consumerist society the satisfaction of seeing products being used up and the sense of happiness it brings you to know that you love everything you have and you use everything that you have it's a feeling that you see simply will not get from having hundreds of items that you don't need. The third tip is to kind of avoid that rule or forget that rule of if I haven't used it in six months or a year, let it go. This is a very common thing that people will tell other people in the decluttering world is if you haven't used it for six months or you haven't used it for a year, let it go. The reason I don't like this rule is because there are certain things that are more of a special occasion item that sure, you're not gonna use them very regularly. So you might think, well, I haven't touched this dress or I haven't used that pair of shoes in a year 
here. Maybe I should pass it on. But the truth is there will be certain special occasion items or special occasions like weddings or whatever going out on a very special dinner date or something and even though you don't use those items very often that time will come and then you will just have to go out and repurchase so i would say ignore that whole rule about if you haven't used it for six months pass it on unless it's something like perfume or something with an expiry date like makeup or skincare but when it comes to things like clothing or silverware or shoes or something like that that you will have a special occasion and then at that point in time what are you going to do you're going to have to go out and repurchase that item so the way to get around this is just to make sure that your closet isn't full of special occasion items if you have you know 25 cocktail dresses and only two daytime dresses maybe you can declutter some cocktail dresses this is something i had to stop doing personally was buying special occasion dresses because i love like fancy going out dresses i love cocktail dresses i love going out clothing it's one of my favorite types of clothing but the truth is i don't go out that often so i had to start turning my sights more toward purchasing daytime casual pieces because obviously that's most of my life and to really minimize the number of cocktail dresses that I had so that's just a tip don't just get rid of everything if you haven't used it in a year really think about the ratio in your closet in your wardrobe about most used versus less used and try to keep that ratio consistent with your actual day-to-day -day life Tip number four is to have an idea in your head to visualize what your perfect collection looks like, what your ideal collection looks like, or for example, what your kitchen counters would look like if you already were where you want to be. What would the inside of your cupboards look like if you had the ideal number of items and if it looked exactly as what you would like it to be? Because what you can see in your mind, you can hold in your hand. I'm a huge believer in um, visualizing things, manifestation, law of attraction, and just the things that you think about, you will bring about. So really important to keep an idea in your head of what your perfect result looks like. For me, for example, with perfumes, I told you guys, I've been telling you guys for years, my perfect collection looks like about 10 to 20 and it fits on one tray. One tray that's on my dresser or in the closet, that's what my ideal, that makes me so happy. Like the, the vision of that brings me so much happiness and peace and calm and anything over that starts to become a little bit overwhelming so for example when it comes to perfumes as you guys know i have tried so many times to let myself have 40 or 50 perfumes let myself have 60 as you know because i love perfume but at the end of the day the truth is every time i would come back to my closet and look at my shelves of perfumes whether it was 40 50 60 70 um, I had this insatiable desire to call it down because it wasn't matching up with the idea that I had in my head. Um, and so I would be standing in front of my closet every night asking myself the same question. What can I declutter? What can I declutter? Because looking at 40 or 50 things there just wasn't making me happy. It was overwhelming me. So really important to have a picture in your head of what that perfect thing looks like because then when you actually open up the doors and see what you do have it's going to be a stark contrast and you're going to be able to say whoa this is definitely too much what can we get rid of and it's going to make decluttering a lot easier so make sure you have a picture in your head of what that perfect result is for you tip number five is pretty cliche and it's probably the easiest rule in the book but it also can be very difficult because we have an attachment to items especially if they were expensive or especially if we think the item is very beautiful but this tip is to declutter things that you just will not reach for and you just don't get enough use out of unless like i said it's that special occasion item but for me when it comes to perfume for example i recently decluttered ombre magique which Honestly, you guys, it's probably the highest quality, one of the most beautiful perfumes I've ever smelled in my life. By all rights, theoretically, that should have stayed in my final collection, but I let it go because I simply don't reach for it and I don't think I'm going to reach for it. It's not an easy wear for me. It's very strong. Um, it's very unique. It's very interesting. It's quite beast mode. It has a potential to be headache inducing if I did reach for it a lot and I just was not reaching for it. It just really stood out to me from the rest of my collection as being sort of too, too extravagant in a way. And so for me personally, I wanted to just sell it because I knew that it was worth something. It was valuable. I knew I would be able to find it at home and I would have rather sold it and taken that money and put that money towards something else in my life, whether that was skincare. I just would rather have the cash than have the perfume. So that was how I felt about that one. Um, so ask yourself, is this thing worth sitting here? 
being admired even though I don't use it? Or could you liquidate it and improve your life and also improve somebody else's life by allowing them to get use out of this thing? Tip number six is to consume media that is going to support your goals and avoid media that is going to sway you to consume or go the other direction. If you're trying to avoid something that is a habit such as excessive makeup or perfume purchasing, turn your focus to other content like minimalism videos, small collection videos, skincare routines, or something that shows how people are happy and utilizing what they already have. Not massive PR hauls or monthly haul videos or huge collections. Um, I personally have not been watching Watching perfume videos lately because I know from the past that it influences me to want to buy perfumes that I don't need and probably wouldn't have even thought twice about were it not for that video. I also find that if I watch too many makeup videos, I end up wanting to buy new blushes and bronzers when I really don't need any more blushes or bronzers. I already have kind of the ones I like and my routine. So you really have to consume content that you know is not going to sway you to want to purchase new items. And I think part of it is just self-control and knowing that you don't have to purchase everything that you hear about because I personally love hearing about new skincare. I love seeing what people are using, learning about new brands. And for me, that's kind of a process of like honing in on what could be better for me, what skincare might be better for me. But when it comes to skincare, you know, you usually don't have like 30 cleansers, right? You might only have two or three that you kind of alternate in between, a little bit different. But when it comes to perfume or shoes or handbags, that's a more slippery slope because it's very easy to just accumulate. Just pay attention to the type of content that you're consuming. Tip number seven is to declutter in phases, a little bit every day. So one thing I found is that the more that I declutter, the easier it is to declutter because it can seem really overwhelming at first to take a collection of 100 items and narrow it down to only 10. For me, for example, it was nail polishes for a while. I started doing my own gel nails. Before I knew it, I had like 50 gel nail colors and I thought, this is ridiculous. I don't even need to do my own nails. This is like a hobby that was supposed to save me money and now I have like a collection of nail supplies <laughs> and I just thought this is ridiculous so actually yesterday I went through and I decluttered like half of my nail supplies and my nail polishes and I think I'm going to keep doing more and my goal is actually to get to a point where I don't even have any more of them and I just go back to the salon every now and again because I'm tired of looking at all the stuff I'm tired of looking at all the nail supplies I don't even know at this point if I even want a uv lamp or anything like that so yeah, it, you have to do it in phases though. So when you start out, you might only be able to get rid of a couple things the first day, but the next time you go back, you'll be able to say, okay, this is actually getting easier. I think I can actually let go of this other thing. And every time you go back to that space, it's going to become more and more clear and it's going to get easier and easier for you to make a decision about what you want to let go of. That first time looking, it's daunting, it's difficult. Definitely follow the first suggestion I said, which is making your heck yes pile. That will make it easier but every time you go back I think you'll find that you figure out there's one more thing you can let go of one more thing you can let go of and it does get easier over time it's not something that's going to happen in one day it might take you weeks or months to get to where you want to be and as you go through and reduce the number of items that you have week after week day after day you're going to find that your cortisol levels literally start to shrink like when you look at that place again you will have this feeling of calmness and peace instead of overwhelm instead of feeling like you have to take a deep breath when you open up the drawers of your dresser or look in your closet or look in the cupboards of the kitchen it shouldn't make you have to take a deep breath you shouldn't have to stop and catch your breath like that tells you you're processing too much you have too much stuff you need to simplify Tip number eight is to avoid maybe piles. So I know that when people declutter, they typically will make three piles, one yes pile, one no pile, and one maybe pile. However, the problem that I have seen with maybe piles, at least for me personally, is that I end up keeping the maybe pile sitting in a box somewhere and I never quite make up my mind about whether I wanna keep it or not. Sometimes I go back and I end up pulling things out for all the wrong reasons. So maybe piles for me, I think it's okay to have a pile if you wanna think about it for like, a small period of time but have a definite point in time where you say okay if I haven't decided to keep any of this stuff it's gonna go today because honestly you guys what I have found is it sits there too long and you have a hard time detaching yourself from those items so what works best for me is to stop storing my maybe piles away the knowledge that there's a box somewhere sitting full of stuff causes me clutter stress 
Anyways, sure it's hidden away, but I know that it's there. So don't store or hide things away that you're not sure about. I either keep things in plain sight that are gonna be used or that I am using, or I just donate them or get rid of them. There's so much more weight lifted off your shoulders if you just cut ties with those items than keeping them there for maybe, maybe you'll use them because there's really not much of a difference between having it sitting in your closet or having it sitting in the basement. It's still there, it still has energy, it still has weight, it still causes stress. The knowledge that it's sitting there in a box is still heavy weight on you, on your home. It still carries energy with it. Um, and every time you look at it, you're gonna feel guilty and annoyed that it's still sitting there. So the easiest thing is just to declutter it. I also wanted to touch a little bit on feng shui because not that I'm a feng shui expert or anything, but I have read a few books and I love a lot of the principles of feng shui and it states that even hidden objects under your bed or in the closet or in the back of a drawer still affect your energy and can cause you to have a poor sleep because those energy are still hanging around your house even though they're not in plain sight. But I always remember the point about not storing items under the bed, for example. My bed has a bed frame that's off the ground. It's really tempting for me to be able to store things under my bed that don't have a space somewhere else or store things under my bed that I'm waiting to sell or store things under my bed that are in the maybe pile. Um, and you know, you guys, I, I can always feel that it's there. I always know that it's there. I sense it's presence trust me you just will feel better if you just get rid of that stuff don't keep maybe piles sitting around your house don't keep them in your closet don't keep them in the basement what good is something sitting in a tupperware in your basement unless it's a seasonal item like a christmas tree really what good is it doing sitting in your basement not much at all so um yeah my suggestion would be to avoid maybe piles altogether you just have a heck yes and if it's not a heck yes it's a no Point number nine is that it's okay to have empty space and empty cupboards. So we always feel the need to fill spaces that are empty with stuff. For some reason, it looks very awkward to us if there's a space on the counter that doesn't have anything, if there's a bookshelf that only has one item instead of three items, if there's a drawer in the kitchen with nothing in it, if there's a drawer in the dresser with nothing in it. We have this inherent nature to want to fill a space with something. I know when my mom comes and visits my house, she'll often look under the TV and she'll say, you know, if it was me, I would have a dresser there. Or if it was me, I would have a console table there. Well, that's fine, but I've tried doing that before. And honestly, all it is, is it becomes another spot to put stuff. <laughs> So I don't feel the need to fill spaces in my home with more stuff. So really having clean, open, airy spaces bring a lot of calming and soothing feelings. So resist the urge to fill your space up with stuff. Just try doing this, you guys. Like take your dresser and try minimizing your clothing to the point that you have an empty drawer in your dresser. I'm telling you, it literally makes you feel like a million bucks. It's hard to get there because we have attachments and we tend to hold on to way more things than we need. But if you can get to that point where you start having empty space, I'm telling you, it's like a game changer. And point number 10, I've already sort of touched on this before, but this is to cut your losses. So when it comes to having items around that you're trying to sell, um, things that you've posted on Poshmark or Facebook Marketplace, or they're worth something, you've spent money on those things, so you don't really wanna just donate them or throw them away. You want to redeem a little bit of cash and you've spent the money, so they're sitting in a bin somewhere waiting to be sold. So I recently actually went through my closet and I took a whole bunch of clothing items that were sitting there, shoes, handbags, items that I had posted for sale, and I finally just donated them. I took them all and I took them all to Goodwill because I was tired of opening a closet and seeing bins of stuff sitting in storage waiting to be sold. Sometimes it's not about money, it's about saving your sanity. And so I just thought, you know what, rather than have these things sit here taking up space, annoying me every time I look at them, causing me physical, mental clutter and stress every time I look at them, I'm just gonna take them in and donate them and then I don't have to worry about it. If it's something that you've spent quite a bit of money on and it's a big ticket item like a treadmill or a TV, obviously maybe you know hold on to that a little bit longer reduce the price, try to sell it because it is worth a little bit more. But when it comes to little things like cheap perfumes, um, you know, pretty cheap pairs of shoes or handbags that you've purchased from fast fashion that you're hoping to make five or 10 bucks from, just cut your losses honestly and donate it and take that as a lesson learned that you don't wanna go wasting your money again. You've cut your ties with that item, you've moved it along and don't waste your money on items in the future. Really think about what you're bringing into your home so that you're not stuck in a position where 
you have to cut losses again. So that would be my last tip, you guys, and I think it's a really important one because otherwise we can end up drowning in a sea of stuff we're trying to sell or stuff we're hoping to find a new home for. It's just easier to just cut your losses completely and donate it, get it out of your house. Trust me, you will feel better. It's like a huge purge. It's like going through and just purging yourself of everything. It feels so much better than keeping piles and piles of stuff, maybe piles, sell piles, donate piles. <laughs> like, Don't keep the piles, get rid of them, get rid of them ASAP and you'll feel much better. So you guys, that is really it. Those are the top 10 decluttering tips that I could come up with. I apply these principles to everything in my house when I am decluttering. And yeah, that's really about it. I hope that you guys found these suggestions helpful and hopefully it was a little bit motivating. Maybe you listened to these tips while you did a little decluttering of your own. Always remember you are not alone in this. It's very easy to get sucked into consumerism. Do not feel like you are missing out. Avoid that fear of missing out when you look at other people doing these huge PR hauls and huge makeup and perfume hauls. You do not need to go out and buy anything. Just because they are purchasing, you don't need to. You don't need to spend your money. You don't need to put yourself in debt. You don't need to compromise your future. You don't need to compromise your peace and mental clarity just to keep up with trends and consumerism. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon in my next one. Bye for now. You said that you needed me Like a car